My name is Brad, this is McKenzie, and we are Galavant's Coffee. The name Galavant's actually came from our love of travel. We just both really like to travel. And also the fact that a good cup of coffee can come from anywhere. It can come from a cart in the middle of a park or in a driveway. So it's really about gallivanting around and all these pieces coming together for a good cup of coffee. And then that cup of coffee itself has its own story of who it's going to and where they're going next. And again, it brings it back to that whole community aspect where we're all separate people, but we're all here and we're all enjoying coffee together. I wake up every day at 4.30 a.m., basically get started. And we load it up on the trailer, drive the trailer out to our location, which is a mile up the road. We start unloading it and setting it up. making sure the espresso machine is nice and warmed up, which takes 45 minutes, so we have to get there a little earlier just to allow the espresso machine to warm up. Put the beans in the grinder, dial in the espresso once the machine's warmed up, set everything up, and then we open. We serve in downtown Conroe and it's got like this beautiful fountain. There's, there's you know, tables and chairs for people to sit at. It's a beautiful location and we're so grateful for the community coming out and showing a lot of love. But moving into downtown and having that setting and going through that process with the city and uh, give them giving us permission, this hasn't happened in Conroe. This is never, like, it was not something they heard of or even knew the concept of. And so it was a brand new thing and new rules had to be made for us. We had a lot of councilmen supported and the new mayor and everything. It, it was way more involved than I thought, but going from the driveway into downtown was a much larger market of business that we had to start serving. And the people that come to you don't know that this is a brand new thing for us to be dealing with all these people. So we got to hire on a couple of cool people like uh, Corey Van Adder and um, uh, Charlotte Crawl, who while I'm focusing in on making a good cup of coffee, she's making sure that they have that customer interaction. Corey's a much more uh, technical with the coffee. He's very focused on like the, the numbers and what it's what it's pulling at and the dial itself. And, um, when he's making the latte art, he's very technical with what he's pouring and he, he tries very, very hard. And uh, you couldn't ask for better people to work alongside. And I think that was something both of us were quite nervous about is working with somebody else, especially because, again, it was built in the backyard. It's you're very self-conscious when you hire on people or hire to work with people. And um, uh, but they they do an amazing job. And, and it's a, it's it's we're so incredibly grateful. One of the important things is our expectations as far as the quality of coffee. You just kind of go through that process of making the coffee over and over again. Once you've dialed in the espresso, it tends to be pretty good, but with us being outdoors, it fluctuates. The flavor profile fluctuates because the humidity rises and falls, the temperature rises and falls. Essentially, you have no control of what the temperature is doing or uh, what kind of atmosphere you're going to be serving in. We, we will stay out there in rain, we'll stay out there when it's hot, we'll stay out there. The wind is a little bit hard to work with. But um, uh, we work with a brand in Houston called Amaya, and Amaya produces an incredibly high quality coffee especially with their espresso. Their temperata is amazing and it's consistent. And that is the goal within coffee is consistency. Despite whether it's me making it or Corey making it or Charlotte or Kenzie, that recipe will taste the same. Something else we really want people to know is that our coffee is made with love, and we want that to come across in our uh, social media presence, in the cups of coffee that we serve to the community. 
and we just want to share our story organically and gain a community that appreciates that. Each day, you know, we put this time and effort in and this passion and it's because we love it. And it started off with just the love of coffee, but it's become the love of the community and the love for the community around us. It's one of those things that we, I, I don't know, we didn't expect our story to touch people, but apparently it has. Now people have gone on. There's a there's a new coffee company that comes by and talks to us and we help them out and grow because that's kind of the point. It isn't about necessarily being the only one. It's a part of something. It's not the only something. We've had a lot of people uh, show up and show a lot of support. And uh, when we were in the driveway, there was a possibility for us being in downtown. And we had this lady come by and she pulls up and she's with her daughter, who's her daughter's an older woman as well. And well, she gets, she sits there and is talking to me about like the machines and the cost. And we hadn't upgraded to a commercial machine that we're using now. And I was telling her, you know, one of the goals that we have is to upgrade to a commercial machine. And she said, well, what, what does something like that cost? And I said, well, uh, they're pretty expensive. She goes, yeah, but how much? I said like $9,000. And she said, uh, well, yeah, that's, that's a bit much. I said, yeah, it is. They're pretty expensive. I said, but that's just something we would need that before we go into downtown. And anyway, so she, we're just kind of talking and she gets in her car and she drives about 10 feet, you know, across the driveway and she gets back out and she just says, hey, real quick, I want you to know I've been praying for you. I said, well, thank you very much. That means a lot to me. And she goes, and uh, God put it on my heart. I want to give you $9,000. I said, what are you talking about? And she was like, no, I want you to be able to get that machine. I said, uh, okay. I, you know, it was weird. It threw me off. I was totally like out of place. And uh, she was like, you ready? you want to order it today? I said, well, let me, let me, let me, let me breathe. Let me talk to McKinsey and see what we can do. And literally it was like a month later, she came by, she bought coffee. She spent $20 on the coffee that she bought. And then she gave me a check on top of that for nine grand. And so these store, these people that like have shown up and showed so much love, we genuinely couldn't be more grateful. It could not have happened without the community around us. It wouldn't have happened. Without everybody being in downtown and staying and showing and posting and all of these things that people do, it, we wouldn't be where we are. We would just be serving coffee in a driveway uh, with a machine that broke a week after we ordered the commercial one. So we wouldn't even probably still be open. I would like to think that I've learned about patience, uh, that's a rough lesson to learn. There were more than a few days that it just wasn't going to happen. And then there was that support system of just, just keep going, just keep pushing past it. So I've learned that there are limits internally that you think this is the stop, this is where it ends. And definitely isn't. You can just push past that. You don't believe it, but the people around you, as long as you have that good support system, will tell you and show you that you can. It was one of those things that it was nicely supported and it was a cool concept, but it didn't grow literally until we opened. Then other people started following. When we started posting the process, it, it was mainly just to have the story uh, of us because it is a weird thing to look back in hindsight and just see it literally being a frame in the backyard. And then it stayed there for probably a week and then we added little bits and bobs slowly, but surely got it to where it is now. It was a core concept of an idea that just kind of blossomed with all this community of a support system and uh, it was beautiful. I loved, I loved, there were definitely hard days though with it, building it. I think it's cool too because none of us are builders or craftsmen or anything like that. We're all just kind of hobbyists in that aspect. What we did know was coffee and we knew that doing this part first, we could get to the part where we could do the coffee, which is what we wanted to do. So one of the important things is our motto for us. It's be kind, drink coffee, roam free. Anytime we travel, we go and get coffee, especially from local places. And being kind, I think that was something that we realized. Even the people that work with us have realized that it, people who come to us are genuinely some of the kindest people and that they always have that good spirit, especially because it's a cart in the middle of a park. They're already willing to roam free and have a good cup of coffee. And they've already 
gallivanted down to from wherever. And that is some of the, I, I don't know, that's, we're so thankful for the, the effort that people put just to come try us out or come back to us. Because this was made from the ground up. And so with every single person that shows up, it means the most to us. And when we make those cups of coffee, that, that mindset of how grateful we are for this person willing to come up to us and let us make this cup of coffee is, is uh, I hope, apparent. <laughs>